All right, next up, we're gonna talk about EQ, specifically parametric EQ, where to find it in the Behringer wing, and how to use it. In addition to using frequency filters to cut low and high frequencies that might be troublesome in the signal that's coming through your channel, you can also use something called a parametric EQ. When you're on the home page of a desired channel, you'll notice that the fourth box down is gonna be your EQ. To switch it on, it's just like the gate. There's a toggle there, blue means on, unhighlighted means off, or you can click into that box and use that same on and off button found in all the audio processors. A parametric EQ is super helpful because it allows you to target specific frequencies within a signal and adjust them turning their volume up or turning their volume down. What you'll notice on this parametric EQ is that there are a few circles here. These are different bands that we can adjust. If I select the first band, you'll notice that there is a gain knob, a Q value, and a frequency. The frequency decides which target frequency I'm going to boost or cut. The gain is gonna determine how much of that frequency I'm going to boost or how much of it I'm going to cut. And the Q value determines the quality and how much that frequency is focused or not. And you'll notice that as I turn the Q value up, the notch in which I am boosting or cutting becomes more narrow. So you can use a smaller Q value to make a broader cut or a finer or a higher Q value to make a sharper cut. Generally, I'll do somewhere in between. Just depends on what the use of the parametric EQ is going to be for me. Now that we understand a little bit more about what a parametric EQ does, let's apply this audio processor to some signals and talk about some general practices when using this EQ. So to help you guys get a sense of what an EQ does, I have a pink noise channel here, and this is just gonna be a flat noise channel for you guys to listen to frequencies low and high. And I'm gonna start out by soloing different frequency bands to give your ears a sense of what fr different frequency bands sound like. So I'm gonna pull the pink noise in here. Okay. So that's just the natural pink noise sound. So now what I'm gonna do is boost different frequencies so that you can hear them stand out within the mix. So I'm gonna start here with a frequency at about 100 hertz. And this is what 100 hertz is gonna sound like when I boost it. With the pink noise, it can be a little bit harder to low, hear the low frequencies, but it's definitely still there. Moving on to a mid frequency, we have about 600 hertz here. And this is what it sounds like when I boost the gain. So that's like mid frequencies. And then to close off on the high end here, we'll go up to about 7K and boost those frequencies so you can get a sense of what high frequencies sound like. So it goes low, mid, high. Okay, so why would you want to use an EQ and when would you cut frequencies? Well, you'd cut frequencies when a signal contains a frequency that has a significantly higher volume than the other frequencies in that signal, or it's a disproportionate frequency. Uh, common instances of this are S's, or just like S sounds in the vocals, um, a resonance of a certain instrument, whether it's high or low. And so here's an example of a vocal track and what I wanna single in on are the S's of this vocal. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it in. And what I want you guys to focus on are those S's. S's mainly live in the 5K to 7.5K frequencies. But again, it's different for every vocal. I'm going to boost the S's in her voice so you can get a sense of what they sound like, and then we'll dial them back a bit so that the EQ of this vocal sounds a bit more natural. Okay, so I'm 
be shaken Cause I've seen what you can do Yes, you So I'll remind my soul to bless you Standing And you can hear those S's coming through a little prominently in this EQ be shaken, So what I'm going to do is dial it back do. just a bit Yes, you So I'll remind my soul to bless you Standing firm upon your truth Her S's are a little no, bit higher than that 7.5A I think they're about 9 Cause I've seen what you can do and yes, so that's an example so of when you would soul. want to use a EQ to cut out frequencies that might be disproportionate to the rest of the signal. And oftentimes, S's are that thing um, that are often a little bit too loud coming through a microphone. Another reason that you would want to cut frequencies with an EQ is if there's information that's coming through a signal that you don't necessarily need for your mix. Well, what do I mean by this? Well, sometimes synthesizers or keyboards may have too much low-end information if you have a bass player playing along with that instrumentalist. And so what you can do is you can use an EQ to cut a bit of that low end, similar to how the frequency filter does, um, to make sure that they're not competing with one another. Let's listen to this keyboard here. So the keyboard sounds pretty good, relatively natural but there's quite a bit of booming low end in there. So what I'm gonna do is take this first EQ filter and dial back the low end around 150 hertz. And now the piano has a lot less low end to it. This allows for the bass not to have to compete with the low end of the keyboard. Now, why wouldn't you just use a low cut frequency filter here? You could, but sometimes what'll happen if you use just a low cut frequency filter is that there is some low end information that's helpful to have from the keyboard. You just don't want as much of it. And a low cut filter is actually gonna just slice all of that information off um, and leave you with nothing. So let me just show you the difference between the two. So if I were to use a low cut frequency filter here, around that 150, you'll notice that the keyboard sound starts to sound rather thin. There's the low end. Okay, so if I use the EQ for that, it cuts out some of those frequencies, but doesn't eliminate entirely any low end information that might be helpful to actually glue the edges of that bass frequency and the keyboard frequency together to make a more even mix. So when would you wanna boost frequencies? This happens a lot less frequently, um, but if a signal is lacking clarity, whether it's in the high end or a thickness in the low mids, um, you can definitely boost frequencies to make that instrument signal sound more full or that vocal signal sound more full. Something that we do frequently is um, boost the high end of an acoustic guitar if it needs to have a little bit more clarity if those pickups within the acoustic guitar aren't crisp enough for us and our mix. Um, but something to note here is that you're really going to want to use broad strokes when you're boosting frequencies. Um, and the reason for this is it'll sound very unnatural if you're boosting a very narrow frequency range. And to give you an example of this, I'm going to pull up that keyboard again. And so say if I wanted to boost the mids of this keyboard to make it sound more full, but if I'm using a notch filter, make it really narrow, it sounds super unnatural. If I were to use a more broad filter, it just gives a bit more presence to the keyboard. Now, I rarely boost things when EQing, because oftentimes my signals contain all the information that I need and usually I just need to cut back certain frequencies. Uh, but feel free to mess around with boosting frequencies where you might need, just depending on the signal. It's definitely a case-by-case -case thing.